Uh-oh. Todd Howard of Bethesda, creative director of games such as the Fallout series and the Elder Scrolls series, comes clean in regards to the Fallout about Fallout 76. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Hit that subscribe button? And rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, peoples, let's talk about it. Your boy, Ryan McCaffrey, did an interview with Todd Howard, creative director of the Fallout series and the Elder Scrolls series on his limited um, IGN series, it's called Unfiltered, um, where he does interviews with different uh, famous folk within the, the, the gaming community. Now, for those of you who don't know who Todd Howard is, I um, mean, you've been living under a rock for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. Todd Howard is the creative director of the Fallout and Elder Scrolls series again. Um, Todd is the recipient of numerous awards, which include just recently, the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2016, the Hall of Fame Award from DICE in 2017, and just last year, the same year that Fallout 76 released, he received the Game Lab, Game Lab Legend Award. All right, Fallout 76 dropped last year to very poor reception critically. Um, it received the Metacritic in the low 50s when you average um, all the scores for PlayStation 4, Xbox, and PC. And uh, Ryan and Todd talk about this in that unfiltered interview releasing June 4th, 2019. So here are my takeaways from this, uh, this snippet that was released so far of that whole interview. I do think Todd feet tries to feed us a little baloney, you know, at the beginning of this whole segment talking about Fallout 76. But afterwards, I do think he's very transparent and honest in some ways. And lastly, I just want to provide my thoughts overall of, of the whole snippet. First, let's deal with that cold horror baloney he tried to feed us, which was they knew that this low Metacritic score was coming. Now, according to Todd, they knew it. They knew it, it, it wasn't a game made for Metacritic. We've heard that before with Crackdown 3, right? Um, but here, here's the thing, y'all. They may have known with the trends of games as a service titles as of late, how they've been hammered but they didn't anticipate Metacritic in the 50s. Um, and if they would have knew that the Metacritic would have been so low, believe you me, they would have either held it back for more enhancements or tried to release it in another way, repurpose it or reintroduce it to the community in another way. Now, why do I say this? I say this because this is the same team, right? The same team that heavily relied on Metacritic so much that they use it to determine if they would give Obsidian, the people that co-developed Fallout New Vegas for them, they use that to determine if they would get a bonus for their work on Fallout New Vegas. And by a lot of reports and some, I, I believe, from Obsidian developers themselves, they didn't get that bonus, bonus because they fell short of the predetermined Metacritic score that they had to reach by like one or two points. So believe you me, if they knew that this thing would be hitting in the 50s, they would have held it back for either enhancements or, or a different way to release. Now here's where I think your boy is being honest, your boy Todd Howard. He admitted that their approach of releasing this game was wrong. And they definitely should have been, they should have taken a different approach. They should have done better. Him and uh, Ryan McCaffrey bounced back and forth, maybe a game preview. And then Todd threw in there as well. You know, I, I guess in reflection, what they should have done is had this game release as a free beta to anybody that purchased Fallout 4. Because if you think about it, Fallout 76 was supposed to be an add-on to Fallout 4, and they flesh it out a little bit further, but I'll get into that in a little bit. So he, he did admit that they did bungle the release of this thing, the introduction of it to the community as a whole, and it should have been repurposed maybe as a, a free beta test out to um, the Fallout 4 purchasers. And then once they felt like they got to a sweet spot, then they would have released it to, to the public for them to purchase. And um, he said that they'll look into that before asking people to give their money, you know what I mean? So here are my thoughts overall on all of this, right? 
Even though Todd was not fully transparent about knowing how actually bad the game would score, you know, I mean, let's be real here. I did like everything else that he had to say. Now, I get it. Some of you are probably sitting back like, oh, come on, MMQK, you just capping. And, and here's why some people that may not be hep to what I've had to say before don't understand why I'm saying this. I've had to defend the game in the past because people were just lying about the game and doing over exaggerations. I mean, come on, people. We had folks out there in the community focusing more on nuka cola real life nuka cola rum and and canvas bags than they were the actual progression of the game and how the game was getting better and then a lot of people were just making up stuff saying things weren't in the game that were clearly in the game so i had to address that as someone that's a fan of the fallout series and again one that does not like the idiot herd you know making its mark over things that it has no business dealing with but nowhere and never did I say that the game was perfect. And big ups to my homie LaButter, AKA Mr. Manhattan of the Broadband Bullies. He helped me realize that a lot of this stuff that is going on with this game, as far as Bethesda getting seen in a bad light, was self-inflicted by Bethesda, and here's how. At the release of Fallout 3, when Bethesda took over the Fallout series, at the heart of the game, it was about, a jour about journey and exploration. With that at its core, it became very popular. But Bethesda wanted to pull in even more people. So they started with New Vegas, adding in casual elements like companions, like dogs and other people that can journey with you. And these ultra layered dialogue trees that led to all these off the wall choices that didn't start to make sense. But again, casual fans, or uh, as far as RPG elements are concerned, they're big fans of dialogue trees. Then you warp to Fallout 4 where now they've added Minecraft elements into the Fallout experience. With that happening, now you've created two camps, two separate camps of people that like the Fallout series. The core fans that came from the Fallout 3 experience that just want the journey and exploration. And these people also want that same journey and exploration every three years. And those that are fancy on the add-ons, the companions and the super complicated dialogue trees like, like puzzles and all this other stuff. You've created two camps like I said. Now you have a new dilemma because going into the next generation which is forthcoming, you now have to develop this Starfield game and start working on Elder Scrolls 6 and you need a new engine, right? So because of this, you can't do a fallout game every three years you can't keep hitting that plateau right but you got to put a fallout experience out there to try to squelch the grumblings that you know is going to be coming and and by doing so you decide to take this add-on that was going to be the fallout 4 which is this co-op multiplayer experience and you decide to make a full-fledged game out of that that will in turn give you time to do what you need to do as far as building a whole new engine for this Starfield game and for Elder Scrolls 6 while calming the nerves of the people that are going to whine and cry for a new Fallout experience. Problem is, this Fallout 76 experience is going to lack some of the components that the casual people want. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to really get the companions that they really like. And most importantly, this, these dialogue trees and these NPCs, they're not going to be present within the game. I mean, you tell them that, but it just doesn't hit home until they get it in their hands. And once they get it in their hands, they go berserk. So I think for Bethesda, the lesson learned should be if you're going to tap into the casual market as you did, and again, I get why you had to do it. You gotta, you gotta make enhancements as far as the market is concerned. I talk about it all the time. But here's the thing: if you're going to do that, ensure you ease them into any radical shift you make, especially if you expect them to pay sixty dollars. But it sounds like they got a plan to deal with that going on in, in, into the future. I like Todd's idea of featuring longer and community engaging betas or like game previews to help with this process. You know what I'm saying? That way it won't look like that they're money grubbing. You know what I'm saying? That they're easing the casuals into this. Meanwhile, giving those core fans the experience every three years that they want, even though it may be a little bit buggy at first because they don't care about that. They just want new Fallout maps new places to journey and, and and to be honest with you i fit into that category so i can relate to that you know what i'm saying and that way that's a better way to smooth out brand new iterations of this game to the masses 
And with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. That's what I had to think about all this. But you know what? It don't matter what I had to think. Let me know what you had to think in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me or come at me. It don't matter to your boy. But if you did like what you had to hear, you can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Click the links below to follow me. And yo, I do a show with your peoples. Snow Bunny, Neethos, Dirk Griggity. It's called Scrampunks. We do it every Wednesday on Dirk Griggity's channel. Look up hashtag Scrampunks for more information on that. And last but not least, follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We doing the damn thing out here. Check out that Discord link. We be cutting it up in there, man. Check out that Patreon link. Hey, we can't do this without your support. And check out that gear. It's fly. And as always, as always, you guys have a wonderful gaming day.